Parliament at Gojo Show. Hello and welcome to the Ahmed and Kojo Show. Today we're going to be covering some of the most important topics in the tricking world. We're going to be changing lives. You and I both know that's fast. Changing perspectives and most importantly, changing ourselves. And, and the, real, the real humdinger, having fun. <laughs> the humdinger. <laughs> All right, listen, brother, I've got to start this off. I got back. I got back to the house at like, uh, I think like 20 to 8. I went on a run and I intended to do like six miles and I ended up doing 7.1. And I, I'm so gassed. I'm you just so ran gassed. seven miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I did it in under a mile as well. Sorry, under an hour as well. <laughs> Bro, I'm up. gassed. This man's running. All things considered as well, I don't feel too bad. I'm happy. Please. Are you proud of me? Tell me you're proud of me. And I want all the comments to tell me how proud you are. <laughs> well, I'm proud. I'm proud of you running, Ahmed. <laughs> you're doing a good job. How do you feel it's affecting your tricking? Like, all the extra cardio you're doing? It's, it's, I'm genuinely really starting to see, like, pretty huge improvements. Um, especially with grass training. Because when I was first training on grass, um, when we went into lockdown, I was getting gassed out so fast. I just couldn't, I couldn't keep up. I was just like, after about 45 minutes, I was like, oh, okay, that's got to have been like, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. And I'd look at the phone, it was like 45 minutes. I'd be like, what the fuck is going on? But now <laughs> I, can, I can happily do a two hour session on grass now and just keep repping shit out like back to back. So yeah, I'm happy with it. Yeah, first, when I've been doing cardio, like regularly, I find it helps with just sessions, stamina, you know? Mm. Cause if you can do more tricks, you can get better faster. So I think aside from like the losing weight aspect to it and being lighter on your feet, I mm. think that's definitely a benefit of cardio, just being able to trick for longer. Yeah. It doesn't, I don't know. Should it affect that? Because it uses anaerobic, your anaerobic system, doesn't it, for tricking rather than aerobic? Yeah, but, but it, will have, it will have a... Um, I mean, if you're running on reserves as well, like if you're, if you're gassing it out and you are pushing, like if you're just doing like enough to just kind of get by, then I'd imagine it wouldn't have that much of a, an impact. But I know for me in particular, especially having uh, smoked all those years, <laughs> I, uh, I'm definitely feeling a little bit better for it. Uh -huh. Oh, look at no, this can. Got a little, ge got little geezers on it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I don't they, know. They look like they've been tortured. Oh, right, this guy over here. My guy here. <laughs> it looks like me when I've just woke up. <laughs> so I did ask on my story for some uh, topic suggestions, but didn't really get anything decent. They're all kind of stupid. <laughs> Let's see if any of them are somewhat decent. It's so shocking how many people, whenever I do that as well, like it's insane how many people just respond with the word tricking. Yeah, I got, I got one saying tricking. I got people making hurtful comments about how I look like a monk. Um, people asking me when the quarantine's going to end. Um, what else? We just need to remind you guys, we're, we're not scientists. Not, not scientists. Yeah, not or politicians. Experts. Or any, we're not experts in anything. <laughs> yeah. Alex covid raw. <laughs> Corona mid. Corona mid. Yeah, you got a beard packed. Oh, you don't even have a beard anymore, so I can't say that no. you have a beard packed full of corona. Look how right, someone, that neck is. <laughs> someone said how to get started. So that's a bit of a topic. What mm. do you think is the best way to start tricking? Because for me personally, if I'm telling anyone what to learn first, I normally tell them to learn butterfly kick first. Because it's really easy. It looks somewhat decent. And... Yeah, it does. It I think leads it's really on to important. a lot of other tricks. I uh, think it's really important in the early days to feel like you're getting somewhere because I feel like the first, at least the first month, it, if you if you're not working on a large enough range of tricks, even though it's kind of difficult because like there's not that many like super low level tricks that you can be working on, it can kind of feel like you're getting nowhere. I, I mean, I was really fortunate because I just kind of did a backflip one time on a beach, 
and I, I've been doing it on trampoline for years, but like I've seen people in, in the gym and they just like, they're trying with their B kick for so long or like their aerial or whatever the case may be. And they don't make that much progress. So I can see how it would be disheartening. But I think B kick is a really good place. Yeah, to start. I think so. Because if you, do you know people going straight to like trying to get backflip and stuff? Like mm -hmm. backflip, you've got all these fear barriers to get over. So it's like you're trying to learn it and you're scared to fully send it or you need someone to spot you or you need a crash mat or some shit like that. Mm. But B-kick, you don't need anything. You can just learn it on grass. And if you can do that, then you can actually do a thing. And then you can learn aerial, you can learn gainer. And you can, mm. yeah, I think it's a good starting point. That's what I always tell people anyway. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so too. Um, I don't know. I think, um, what do you think the difference? I, I'd, I'd love to know, like, how many people that start and really struggle to, like, get over the fear barriers. And generally, like, the difference between those that, do have the fear barriers, but they get over them sooner. I wonder how that impacts, like, the entire, like, tricking career. I wonder if there's, I don't know, people find it harder to progress and then end up dropping off. Or, like, if there's some kind of, I don't know, connection between I the think, people that do just go for backflip. I think the fear barriers at the start can actually help you in some ways. How do you mean? Which in is an way? interesting one. I think it helped me in some ways. So, before, when I was too scared to do, like, uh, swing throughs. Mm-hmm then it meant that I just spent loads of time doing B-twist onto one leg, like again and again, and drilling, drilling all of my singles, really, like, like loads and loads of times. So it yeah. meant when I did finally go for a B-twist swing, then I did B-twist swing cork really easy, and then I could just always do it. And it just gave me a good base. Whereas, you know, when people are really bad at B-twist or whatever, and they're trying to swing it, and they're just yeah, whacking yeah. around... I feel like that's probably not as useful as if they were just practicing the move by itself with control. So maybe Absolutely. having a bit of fear at the start can actually like help to build a base. No, I get you. I think that's a, I think that's a pretty good, good kind of thing to notice. But I think, I don't know. I think for me, it, it ended up hindering me for a long time. Like not, not being able to swing certain things i really struggled with swinging twisting moves and it was getting to the mm. point where like because of fear well i i don't really know like looking back it was fear but it was also just like lack of control um because like do you remember we we were on the grass outside uni and you were trying to get me to do cart full swing because the thing is like i was doing the cart full good enough like, I had the power to swing out of it, but there was the fear, and then there was also the control element, which was making the fear, like, way worse. But I could do it just as well on grass as I could on sprung floor, but because I was being a little bitch, I just wasn't... I was freaking out, and it was making me less controlled. So, I don't know, like, that that ended up holding me back, and then also with doing cork swings. Do you remember? It took me so long, like... I had so many attempts of trying to try and swing court, but I just didn't actually do it because I was being a little pussy bitch. <laughs> yeah, those were the days, eh? Mm. Oh, Coke so has a wham neck. Oh, <laughs> uh, yo, I talk about my neck so much. Look at this neck. <laughs> yo, my neck is so jacked. I picked up so many trickers with my neck as well. It always comes up at gatherings. When I start drinking, then the neck comes out. I lift people up, shake them around. I'm like a powerful giraffe with this neck. I'll never forget when you came back from the barbers um, and, and that oh. woman just complimented your neck the, whole, the entire <laughs> time. <laughs> My muscular neck. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that reminds me as well. You remember when, um, when I first came back from Colorado when I, I was pretty certain I'd torn my ACL and I went to two different physios and the second one, it cost like 50 pounds just for the introductory session, which was like a 30 minute session. It had great reviews online, all this kind of shit. And I, <laughs> I went in, I was hoping that she was going to do like different tests and do this, that and the other. And she just kind of asked me what had happened, asked me what I'd been doing and told me how lovely my legs were. I'm not even joking. She <laughs> gave me absolutely nothing useful. I paid the woman 50, that's like the world's worst prostitution. I gave her 50 yeah. pounds and she just complimented my lovely legs. <laughs> I had one, well, I feel like most trickers who've tried this out anyway will have some really bad physiotherapist slash ma massage therapist stories. Yeah, like yeah. I went to get a massage one time and the woman did like nothing. 
It was, I think it was my lower back that was the problem. And she just poked it a bit. And she's like, yeah, is it hurting here? And then she was just talking to me about what it was that I did with the flips and stuff and said, my, back, my lower back muscles are developed. And, like, they didn't do shit. She just, like, prodded it a bit. It wasn't like Claire. Now, Claire, for world's strongest, well, UK's strongest woman, Claire, yeah. who sorted out mine and Ahmed's bodies plenty of time. Much over the years. She, she gets in you. With her, <laughs> she, she fucks you up. She doesn't, like, just push against your muscle. She gets inside of it. Yeah. And then I mean, she, like, wriggles around in there. It's, it's messed well, up. The first time I ever went to her, I made a point of, like, saying to her, I was like, listen, even if I'm being a little bit of a bitch, I need you to just carry on. I want you to, like, do what needs to be done. And even if it fucks me up for, like, a day or two, just get just get me fixed because I'm <laughs> fucked up right now and I'm fed up of it. And I don't care how much pain I'm in. I don't care how much I'm squealing. And she stayed true to that <laughs> for years, literal years. Every time I'd come out, it was like I'd been absolutely battered by Mike Tyson. I couldn't move yeah. properly. I felt all daisy. It was fucked, man. Could, could you imagine how different do you think your tricking career like would have gone? Imagine if you had that kind of support like whenever you needed it. Like You could see a physio every day if you wanted to, and they'd just spend mm. however long you wanted like trying to sort out your body. How much do you think that would affect your training? Well, I think it, I think it depends because it depends on pardon me the additional infrastructure because like obviously throughout because if if i was just working my normal job and like at years and years ago if i was just working my normal job and training but i also just got tons of physio and massages and stuff like that it would have sorry it would have improved things but i don't i feel like that wouldn't have made that much of an impact mm -hmm. um I think I think if you've got it across the board, like if you've got the physio and you've got the massage therapist and you've also got like a PT that's like specialized and knows exactly how to like correct imbalances in your body and can like see what you need to work on in order to make your tricks stronger. I think that would like across the board, that would change the game. Like a good PT would be a game changer. I've yeah. always wanted a PT. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Someone who can literally just like look at my videos and look like intently and understand the types of movements and then cater the training to the types of movements that we yeah. do and to stop me from getting injured because of all these bastard imbalances if you work out specifically for that it's like my the best physiotherapist i had well one of them he gave me those exercises for my ankles which are mm -hmm. pretty simple but just got me doing the one leg box jumps and they made yeah. a bigger difference than anything else i'd ever done because I'd always been like conditioning with resistance bands and stuff. But mm -hmm. once I got doing jumps and landing in different positions, yeah, it was the game changer. Well, that was, that was kind of the same for me. My, um, after I had my ACL done, my, I, I was crazy lucky with that. Because I had, um, I, originally, when I went to the hospital, it was just like a normal hospital. And I remember I was sat in the, I was sat in the office with the surgeon. Because before you have the surgery, you have to sit and speak to the surgeon. And he goes, um, he, looks, he looks at the MRIs and stuff and he just goes, I can't do this. This is too complex for me. And right there and then, he called somebody up and, said, and asked if they could do the surgery. And he was like, right, okay, so you're going to have to go to this hospital. Um, and I turned up. It turns out it was a private hospital. And I was taken, I was taken care of so nicely. I had my own private room. Yeah. I had this PT... And he was like the England hockey squad PT. <laughs> and he was just like, he was Working amazing. Yeah. And he was a lovely guy. He was like the longest, skinniest guy I've ever met. <laughs> Super lovely. Really supportive of Ahmed. And he was just like the, like the, um, like the rehab stuff, like the jumping and the turning and all that kind of stuff that he gave me to do. Just changed the game for me. He was well, great. That's one of the things that would be really cool if tricking did get bigger. Because whenever people talk about like trying to get tricking out there and grow it, then other people always question it and say, well, why should it be bigger? Why do we need it to be any bigger? Mm. And I think that's one of the biggest arguments for like growing tricking, getting more people into it. If mm -hmm. more people did tricking, then there'd be more of a reason for companies to sponsor trickers yeah. and pay for all of that shit. Like imagine you were getting hooked up with like just the top trickers were getting like all kinds of physio treatment. Whenever they got injured, they could go see someone, get like cryotherapy and just all of that shit. 
that would be such a game changer for how yeah that changed that changed the whole sport like i feel like if like depending on the time frame in which that happened i feel like that could just like actually change the entire future of like the course of the sport because like imagine if all of a sudden like overnight right now all of the best trickers in the world just got like Nike and Adidas sponsorships and like sponsorships from these enormous companies that were going to like facilitate their training. Imagine like if, if all of like the best in the world only had to focus on training, they had the perfect physios, perfect masseurs, everything, every single day. It, like the two histories that like the one without that and then the one with, the one with would progress so much faster and more people would actually want to get involved then as well because it's more of a legitimate thing. Yeah. I mean, how good would that make the top level? Because think how good some trickers are now. Mm -hmm. Imagine if there was, and loads more people doing it, so more chance of someone being like genetically gifted towards it or just getting really, really deep into it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's have a look at some of these comments. Someone said, imagine how sick it would be if it was a mainstream sport, but I don't know if that would ruin how special it is. Uh, and I get where you're coming from. I don't think it would ever be mainstream. It's not going to be yeah. like that. It, it's too hard is the main thing because not not everyone can just learn tricking. You yeah. know, you have to be in fairly, like you could be a fat middle-aged dad and you can play a bit of football or tennis, but I, you, wait, can't I play, you can't just trick. Like, I think it's a bit more exclusive than that, but I think it could get a lot bigger. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, like, in terms of, like, sponsorship and stuff, this is something that, like, I really want to be able to get so piety to a point where, like, I don't know what it's going to look like and what it is that I'm going to do exactly because, obviously, it depends on what's going to be most beneficial for tricking as a whole or, like, athletes or whatever. But I'd love to be able to, like, sponsor events and put on, like... um I don't know, like, have, like, trickers get paid to make, like, incredible videos or, like, go on incredible trips and be able to, like, if possible in future, be able to have, like, an actual team, maybe, and they just, like, have... The, the same way that, like, skateboarders or, I don't know, any kind of sport would kind of have any team sponsor and they just rep the shit and they just get a little bit of money and then gradually that will become more and more because that's kind of what happened with tri uh, skateboarding. I think it all started happen. small. Yeah. yeah. I think that will happen in the future. And someone said, do you think we can make tricking an Olympic sport? Now, oh, we haven't talked about this one for a while, but I think the best way for tricking to be an Olympic sport, or it doesn't even need to be the Olympics, just competitive, like the, the tricking World Cup or whatever, or some kind of like formalized competition, yeah. is tricking kind of breaking up a bit. You'd have to have like sport tricking, like competitive tricking, and then the more artistic side. Mm -hmm. Because without having some kind of regulation in terms of what combos are worth what and what tricks are and how good they have to be to be that trick, then you can't really judge it fairly. So yeah, I it think is. it needs some kind of structure. But that doesn't mean everyone needs to follow that structure. You can just yeah. have like the sports side, the Olympic tricking. You have to be in this kind of box that's easy to judge but then you have normal tricking as well, where you do what you want. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many examples of that in pretty much every sport. Like, think about how many people you see just playing football down the park, and they love it, and they'll go and do it frequently. And even though it's a billion-dollar industry, it's not going <laughs> to... Like, just because that's also happening, it's not stopping old Joe going down the park and kicking the ball around with his pals, you know what I mean? Well, uh, trickerous said it's an art it can't be a competitive sport and it it, it can though because Any, pretty much any art be. is competitive even like musicians they have competitions are yeah. you gonna say music isn't an art what about ballet they have competitions is that not an art like yeah. just all forms of dance have competitions but everything has competition in it and it doesn't make it not an art there's even art competitions yeah for God's sake. <laughs> like it doesn't make it not an art so yeah, I don't know. That I, I think sense. that's. I think I feel like it's just a very narrow view of like yeah. what what you would consider competition because like and that's kind of the case with a lot of people though they do look at competition as like pitting people head to head and it's like I don't know like it has to be like this one thing that's like it doesn't even exist yet it's not like 
like real high level competition within the sport doesn't exist yet. It's just that like there's events that also have battles that have just been kind of taken from another sport and latched onto ours. <clears throat> yeah. I agree. <laughs> Are you lagging out? Oh no, sorry, I was reading the I was reading comments. You're reading the comments. Yeah. 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 Some, Josh was saying I don't know, there are music competitions. Like I, I don't know what to tell you. Look it up. There's competitions for any type of music. Well, I mean, like look at things like X Factor. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but just just in like outside of that, just for any type of music, there are competitions. Like mm. it, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, someone said, I think it would work if the judges comprised of people from different disciplines. Nah, I think the judges, nah. should, be the judges should be trickers. The judges you should can. be people who know about tricking, like who have a deep understanding of tricking. Why would you have a gymnast judge in it and a martial? Why would you have a load of people who don't know what the moves are judging? That doesn't, that doesn't happen in anything. <laughs> <laughs> Literally nothing. Unless it's for a show, like I don't know, some kind of like spectacle, but, reality <laughs> TV show. Yeah, like a serious, a serious competition. Like you, who, who do you think's judging at the Olympics? <laughs> you think it's like a plumber? No, oh, they, I feel like they probably end up having some bullshit judges. Uh, just like at hooked, it's not always all trickers judging. I mean, it definitely should be, but I don't know. It hooked is no tricking competitions that serious. We haven't yeah. got to that point where it's like we. We haven't got to the point where it's really fair, you know? Yeah. We haven't got there yet. The guidelines aren't clear enough. And I think one day it will get to that point, but I think it will take away some parts of the sport, you know? It, I, it's I, got, I wouldn't phrase it like that. I think it just means that, like, you, it'll hone in on certain parts of the it's sport. It's got because... to be streamlined. Like, yeah. if for Olympic tricking, you could have, like, a competition of where you get points for like every rotation you do, you get points for every kick. And then there's someone like judging, you know, difficulty level. I don't know. I don't know. People, someone's going to have to come up with that. But I think you could have that and it wouldn't be a problem because everyone else would still be able to do whatever they want and you wouldn't have to compete. But just for the trickers who really want to, there would be something there for them. And it would be good for exposure for the whole sport. People would see, like, sport tricking in the Olympics and then be like, oh, and, and look at it more and then maybe get into the more artistic side of tricking where they just create their own combos and just have fun. Do you think... What do you think it would take in order for it to get to that kind of level? Mm, I think it's going to take some people to really want it to happen. You know? It's gonna take it's gonna take one or two people who are like dedicated to like their whole thing is they want tricking to be in the Olympics. You know, like how adrenaline want tricking to be a competitive sport, like have a racket of people competing. Mm -hmm. It will take someone like so, yeah, some organization or person who really wants that to happen to make it happen. I mean, it's happened in skateboarding now, hasn't it? So what? I wonder how that ended up happening. I think it'll end up being incremental. Um, so, like, the way the way gatherings have, have grown, um, like, if there was enough money to throw, like, imagine, like, an X Games type event where it's, like, really, really well done and there's various different, like, types of events and it's mm. all based around tricking. And to be honest with you, I don't think it would be a bad thing to kind of link these things with other sports, like if it was like a b-boy slash free running slash parkour slash tricking event, all the same thing. Yeah, and it was all just like under the one. I'd not let imagine it was like a, like an X Games type deal. That I think that would be. Like a, that. I think no, I know, but like I mean, on a bigger scale. Yeah, I was just gonna that, say it's worked on a smaller scale, so I, I don't think, see why you couldn't do a big version of that. Well, that's the thing, like because with X Games stuff, like you have summer and winter, and like either of them, like you have a whole host of other of, uh, other sports that are involved. It's like X Games. I always think of skateboarding or, or BMXing and things like that. But there's like, it's there's so many different sectors within that. It's like there's the big vert ramps and then there's bowl and then there's like so many different types of events that are going on. And it is only a few sports, but 
they all kind of work in harmony because they're the kind of thing that are going to bring one crowd and show the other sports that yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. I, so I, I get, get you. I get it, you. Well. it will get people from the different extreme sports to see the other ones. Yeah, 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 for sure. Also, to answer one of these comments, I don't think there are any martial arts in the Olympics. I'm pretty sure it's all category, actually. <laughs> Taekwondo's in the Olympics. Judo's in Judo. the Olympics. I, I'm Judo. pretty sure there's a bunch of them in the Olympics. Like. Wrestling's in the Olympics and everything. Is yeah, fucking boxing, which is a yeah. martial art. In kickboxing yeah. as well. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot. It's a whole category in the Olympics. Um, yeah. There's not says, much running in the Olympics either. <laughs> but someone said swing competitions and i thought about that and i think that would work it i think so too. in a bit of a narrow way but i think that it's a really good way for people to understand what's going on so, uh, anyone can understand how someone doing 20 corks is better than someone doing 17 corks so i think that's a really accessible way to show tricking even though it doesn't show much of it just maybe if you had like multiple different, like gymnastics, where you got to compete in like different things and a swing battle was one of them, like that would be really easy for people to follow. But so also, it would be good for getting people to like be in, interested in what's going on. Yeah, for sure. But like also, there's also subcategories that c could kind of be within the swing category. You know what I'm saying? Like you could do even if it was something crazy like most swings and people were out here doing that like 60 swings or whatever. Yeah. But then there was also like, you have one big trick and it has to be from a gain of switch or a cork. Like you and I have always talked about how like, how much power could be gained if trickers gain of switches were like whips or back handsprings. Like imagine you did a, a gain of switch that was like, traveling half the length of the floor and you're landing super far forward and blocking it all the way up and people are just doing like full 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 or whatever out of the swing and it just got absolutely out of happen, control though. That's yeah like, happen. i think that that could be a super cool i think that would be so fucking hype like and it was just essentially like biggest swing trick and you people do are everyone doing, doing touchdown raise gain a switch and trying to do the hypest trick out of it people doing like full and dub out Swing, swing, uh, double gain of flash. <laughs> Imagine if that was a. I feel like that should be part of tricking gatherings now, and th mainly because people would do mental things. <laughs> people would do things. Yeah, that are so crazy. You just get shows. Just let shows say loose. You know, yeah, what much. would he do? Like cork, cork deal leg in, full deal yeah. leg out. <laughs> Yo, that'd be so. Imagine hard. that. A really specialized, like honed in particular trick into the craziest trick you can think of. Well, I, I think um, Josh said maybe if there were different divisions like track and field, um, so having swings or longest combos, biggest tricks. And I think you're onto something a bit there. I think if it were to be in the Olympics, then having separate divisions would make the most sense. So, um, yeah, so you'd have one for like swings and you'd have one. I've always thought, what if you had one where there's actually like a set combo and then yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. has to do it and it's judged on like the execution of that combo. And yeah, people are doing the same sort of thing, but it just judges a different thing. It judges people's execution. And, and then for, I don't know, it's just, just different ideas like that where you're <laughs> judging different parts of their tricking because when you try and judge it all at the same time, You've got one guy doing, like, Johan, doing trip, dub, trip. If that's against a combo from, um, like, Riku or Jordan Alexander rolling around doing all this creative stuff, mm. you can't really compare it. You're comparing apples to oranges. So instead, split it into divisions so you can actually compare the same thing. That, I, that would make a lot of sense. I, I agree with that. And I think, um, I think an interesting approach... Now, I, I, let, let me know your thoughts on this. If you kind of took a game of trick type competition where it was like, but there's rules about the game of trick. Like if all of the combos have to have one kick and one swing, something else. Oh, sorry. Did I lag out there? A little bit. But yeah. Um, but yeah, there's like restrictions within it. You can't just do whatever the fuck you've got to do. Like one of each thing, basically. Um, I think that would be a, like a really interesting thing to watch because like even like games of yeah. skate, 
I, I watch them and I think they're hype and I don't really know what they're doing, but I still think it's really entertaining to watch and it's good to follow and like see, okay, well, he's trying to his weakness there or his strength and it's ended up kind of meaning that it's pretty head to head until the end and then it's like down to that final letter and I think it's just super hype. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think making it so sort of people can understand what's going on without necessarily need, needing to know what all of the tricks are. Mm -hmm. So the whole game of trick thing does work. That wouldn't that'd be hard to do in a big competition type of thing. But maybe how about this? Okay, so people would be able to prepare for this. What if there were like ten or fifteen different combos that could potentially come up, and then it's a completely random choice which ones come up, mm -hmm. and everyone has to perform that combo as well as they can, and their execution is judged, like for judging the execution side of things, and then. You, it'll be easy to judge like swing power, but I don't know how you're going to judge the other parts of tricking. I think creativity can't really be judged. I think that that's where I draw the line between like sport tricking that you could see as a more competitive thing, like that you could have in the Olympics or X Games and then tricking, tricking, like freestyle tricking. Because really, I mean, you can try, but I don't think you can really judge creativity. Like it's just, it's too subjective. It's not fair. Yeah, really. you can't what, really quantify like, who says it. What's more creative, you know? Yeah, I I feel you with that, but you because well, it, like I say, it's not it's not really quantifiable. You can't like, yeah, like it's just too subjective. So but, I think leaving but, it out, people would be like, uh, but can you leave the creativity out? And I think you're leaving it out of sport tricking. You're leaving it out of the yeah, competitive yeah. tricking, but then you could still have the artistic tricking that is full of creativity. I think. Yep. It, instead of trying to change tricking so it fits competitions, just make a whole new thing for competitions mm -hmm. and then keep mm -hmm. what we have for tricking. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I don't really know. I, it's a tough one. It's an yeah, idea. It's, it's, especially in terms of the creativity shit. But yeah. Yeah. Some, someone said they're doing, um, Kojo, I believe they're doing your idea with Battle of Fury virtual right now. Oh, I'll have to have a look at that. You mean they're kind of so having set combos with a pool of trickers. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah, I, I cool. think that's cool to see. Or like a pool of tricks, yeah. If you just said it's like random out of a hat or whatever, you won't, you have to make your combo out of these five tricks and everyone has to make their combo out of the same five tricks and it's whoever does it best, yeah. you know? Yeah. I don't know. You just need some way to kind of regulate it so it's easier to judge and fairer to judge as well. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, just some of these, um, some of these comments. What it? My brother. Um, all right, so Yuri said, my brother got rock climbing into the Olympics. Oh, fair enough. Yuri's brother getting on it, sorting out rock climbing. Again, the job um, done. Yo, have you seen that shit? Have, have you, you seen like speed one? climbing? Um, yeah, yeah, it's mental. Bro, it's it's so mental. Crazy. They're like it's monkey men. So just tough. lying up those walls. It's so yeah. Crazy. No, it, I've it's never nuts. seen anything like it. Like someone said, in parkour, they have skill comp, freestyle, big trick speed. See, I think the divisions is definitely yeah. looking like the way to go, the easiest way to judge it. Because at the moment, the way we do battles, like everything against everything, it's not really fair. It doesn't make much sense. It just means you just get really good at like a couple of really hard power moves and you just beat everyone but should you really beat everyone you know well sorry that mouthful of cooking <laughs> it's pretty much got to those divisions anyway just because like when you watch like the, the final battles are hooked the quarter semis and finals you're not seeing that much of a variation of tricks yeah and it's it's just kind of the way but, it's gone at this point. And you can't blame the trickers for that. They're, no, no. They're it just playing sense. the game. They're yeah, just playing sense. the game. It's just the way it's set up is producing those results. It's encouraging people to do that, to do like, yeah, you do a couple of 12s, you do a quad, you win. It's encouraging people to follow that formula, really. So, yeah. Uh, what's Yuri saying? Yeah, so what I mean is that climbers that are specialized in difficulty... The Olympics are forcing them to speed climb to compete, which is dumb because they're almost different sports. Fair enough. But 
Yeah, I don't they have like that's... a difficulty competition. I, I don't know. I don't think that's the categorization's fault. It's like it it's like if a trickers it, it like how we have it in tricking now. If a trickers really good at creative stuff, then they're not gonna do well at hooked. Yeah. It's, yeah, you gotta make the system work as well as possible, but it's always gonna leave some people behind. There's always gonna be someone who's good at the thing that doesn't win competitions. But but it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to leave them behind. And I always use the parallels of skateboarding and stuff, but like, mm. if it's, I, I just feel like it's a pretty good example because it's not it's not understood by the general public, but the general public are interested because of certain elements of it, and <clears throat> that means that you can draw an audience, which means you can draw uh, money to the event, and then even if you're not necessarily competing, there's people that like have skateboarding sponsorships and they have all these opportunities and they make dope videos and they. I don't know, they, they get to do crazy shit and they get to do, like, their style of skating, but they just don't necessarily compete and they're able to make full livings for themselves. But I think it's a lot easier for people to understand when it's like, oh, okay, so this guy did this one thing better, so he won and moved on to the next round, which means once you understand what you're looking at, you can kind of get drawn in and once you've got viewers and you've got eyes on the sport... Again, that's where the money kind of comes in. That's, that's very true, actually. That's an interesting one to think about. If tricking did, let's just Olympics as the example, doesn't need to be the Olympics. If it was just in some kind of big competition, then it would draw more people and therefore draw more money to tricking. So the people who don't even take part in the competitions, if they're like really good at the creative side, they'd benefit too because yeah. there'd just be more eyes on the sport, more people looking at them, more sponsorship opportunities for them. Yeah. So it would kind of help everyone without, it wouldn't really take anything away from you if you're just out on the grass doing your crazy, interesting combos. And well, if it anything, would potentially give you things. If anything, it's just going to actually, it's, uh, to, in my opinion, overall, even though there may be certain downfalls it, when you look at a certain thing within tricking, because you may not like the fact that like trickers have to kind of conform to be a part of this competition, but that's their choice. They don't have to do it, but it's going to get interest from trickers because there's the competitive edge. And also there's probably going to be money in it, but the people that aren't doing that, there's just going to be more gyms popping up. There's going to be more support for them. And there's going to be a bigger community as a whole, which means that if you're one of the guys that messages me, which I get all of the time saying, Oh, I love tricking, but, there's nobody near me that does it because nobody knows what the fuck it is. You don't have to like be an outcast in order to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you can have a whole yeah. community in every town. And then it just means that like everyone's better off. That's kind of more how free running is now. Free running's big enough that at least in the UK anyway, in like any town, there's going to be some people who do it. Yeah. But um, Dilk said another round could be whoever innovates the best brand new trick. Now, I think that's another thing that you couldn't really fairly judge. But I do think that's something that would be super entertaining to watch if there was yeah. a big money prize. And you wouldn't have to know that much about tricking. You'd just see people throwing down these crazy <laughs> movements. Like, imagine, imagine the prize was big enough that people were keeping their brand new move secret and, like, working on it really hard so that they could do it on that day. And everyone mm. was doing that. How hype would that be when you're waiting to see, oh, what's, what's Alexander going to do? What's well, Jose going to do? You know, how hype would that be? More that's hype interesting than the as well, anyway. because the videos after the event would get more attention. True, it would get true. more people. It would get more people going to the events because they know that the people that have been like holding back their real bangers, like, although it would kind of take a little bit of something away in terms of like every time you open your phone, you're not going to see a world's first because that for a period for, I felt like for about six months every time I opened my phone no matter day or night someone was doing something that had never been done before <laughs> and it was all just pretty much coming out of Japan but yeah imagine if you went to an event and that all happened within the space of an hour in front of your eyes that would be fucking nuts yeah that would be a re that'd be a show to remember instead 100%. of seeing people so Someone said, that's hooked for power combos. It's not it's really, not, though, though. Because they're not. just doing cart quads and things they've already done. They're not doing brand new moves, They're really. actually doing it. They're doing less because they, they don't yeah, want to fail in hands. the battle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, imagine it was just the one trick and it was like a 
people trying brand new things and they had an incentive to not release the clip because if yeah. they release the clip then other people are going to be trying to like get on it and it's just so not just been training in secret and trying yeah. to think of something brand new i think that, but still like being able to post their footage the same way that any athlete does like they'll post their footage but they're just going to hold back that real source yeah. and then after that it's just kind of commonplace <laughs> yeah I just saw a quad late night. Yeah, no, I saw, I say, imagine. Show says double aerial thing, and it's like, yeah, he did that months before hook. Though I'm not. There were brand new moves that hooked, but we're talking about a competition where it's only brand new moves. Yeah, where like that's the goal. It's not just doing really good tricking combos. The whole goal is to do something brand new. It'd be pretty interesting. That would be fucking. No, I'd love to see that. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I wouldn't mind done. waiting either. <laughs> Double spider. <laughs> There's a few ways you can think of that. You know what'd be cool? Spider helicoptera. Never seen anyone do that. So I think spider, oh. then swipe, then heli heli it. How sick would that look? Wait, so look do you mental. do you roll wait, I'm I'm struggling to envision it. So do you roll so you over spider, your back? So you're on a flat spin axis and then as and then you swipe down, so you oh, spider then... it. But then you pull it up, up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I see. Yeah, yeah that would yeah. be crazy looking. <laughs> well, you, yeah. you should do that. I mean, that would take some, some doing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, you could but fucking do something like that. You could do that from punch as well. You know, um, what's Ooh. it called? Janitor. Janitor, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did punch like janitor and then swiped it, helied it. There's loads of new ground to be covered with helicopteros. I feel like yeah. that's going to be one of those uh, Ahmed's heel ends up in his rectum type drinks. <laughs> you're, you're just in the hospital, you get an x-ray and you've got like a heel up there. <laughs> it's stuck. It's just so stuck. <laughs> just, I'm laying on the bed with my leg in my ass. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, full in cork out where you're swinging me. <laughs> That'd be sick. <laughs> oh my God. Well, what what else are we saying? Um, not much. I don't know. Yeah, the the problem with tricking in Olympics is the Olympic organization. Yeah, the Olympics is pretty pretty messed up. So that's why we're kind of just saying the Olympics is like a benchmark for it hitting somewhat of a mainstream. Like, yeah, it could be the X Games or, or even a brand new thing that just had, like, a lot of funding. Just a yeah. big competition. That's what... I think that's what people mean when they say the Olympics. Like, it doesn't yeah. necessarily need to be the Olympics. Well, that's what I think of anyway. Just big competition. Yeah, just something that's really going to, I don't know, propel the sport, I guess. And yeah. ima imagine that, though. Imagine how different... Like, imagine if all of a sudden right now, trickers were told, okay, so there's going to be this event and if you train hard enough, like, this is going to be seen by a lot of fucking people. And it would, I, it would just change everything. I feel like it would kick people into gear. I feel like people that, especially during quarantine and stuff, like, people that are, like, kind of relaxing a little bit because they're like, ah, fuck it. Like, people would start really taking note and they'd start killing shit. Or well, if there's then... a 50 grand cash prize or something, 100 grand. Bro, how do you think that would change things? All right, here's here's a question for you, Ahmed. How do you think hooked would be different if there was a hundred grand cash prize for the battles? Uh, I don't think everyone would be so lovey dovey. <laughs> that's the thing. I feel like I feel like people. Well, it depends. It depends because if there were t so like if there were tons of other events where there were like pretty big cash prizes. But then there was just like the big bastard at the end of the year. There was just like 100 grand. But then there was a, a bunch of them all over the year where they were like 20 grand or whatever the case. You know what would be cool actually saying that? Like with uh, SLS, which is like uh, street leagues. Um, it's a Nike. It's a Nike skate skateboarding event. And they have yeah. like heats all throughout the year. And the winners, like obviously the money is crazy. Um, but each winner of each heat earns X amount of money. And then the next heat is like a month or so later or however long. But then like it's a tournament essentially. So then at the end of it, you get an even bigger cash prize if you're top of the league because you've won the most or you've got the most amount of points throughout mm. the whole thing. Imagine how hype that would be because people get more of a chance to win 
money and be able to fund themselves and like all that kind of shit. And it's like over the course of a year and it's almost like a championship type thing. I think following that throughout the year, that would be so hype. That would that would be hype. And Josh is saying um, something about that. That yeah, if gathering promoters came together, it's like if they had if they had more funds behind them, like yeah. they could do kind of a miniature version of that already, but not. It wouldn't be like that large scale unless they got a bigger uh, sponsor or something. But that would be cool. Like, I mean, they could already get the logistical side of it sorted now. Yeah. You know, if there's some kind of ongoing year-round competition mm-hmm. where it's like you win a certain amount of different gatherings. I mean, if, if you, I don't know, you get points for like wherever you placed. I guess yeah. that's how forms do it. We don't want it to be too much like forms. Now, I was, now I was saying like... Big, but fair. Not you know? forms, but like with the... I don't know, like even just taking that model of like SLS, you just get like out of 100, you get, you get scored depending on where you place in the rankings. And I think it would just overall, like, it would boost. I don't know. I feel like, imagine if Tricking just had uh, an injection of a million pounds, like, for the events. And then, like, just for this, this next year. I feel like that would just change everything. And there'd be way more attendance at gatherings because they know that people are going to pull up and wreck. And th- at that point, it would then start kind of exponentially growing within the sport and externally. Because, I don't know, there's a lot of gatherings where they offer great experience, but there's not necessarily that much of an incentive well, for you to part with your cash in order to go. Someone said, so people are asking how much the hooked prize is. I'm pretty sure it's like a thousand euros. It's not that much, or maybe even 750, I think it has been some years. It's like, it's not tons of money. And I wonder, like, how much... How much more would people who aren't into tricking be interested in it if there was a big prize? If it was like 50 grand, then if I was watching just videos on YouTube of it, it would just seem so much more legit, even though be, yeah. I'd be watching the exact same thing. But that's, it's all about framing. It's public perception, it? yeah. Yeah, if there was a big cash prize, then I'd be like, oh shit, these guys are doing the hardest stuff. Because I'd be thinking, no one's going to be giving away 50 grand unless these guys are the best of the best. Whereas if you can't tell that, if it's like 750 euros cash prize, then you think, oh yeah, that it's just some, some bullshit little competition. Yeah. It's like my example, when I did those uh, five switches at the park for that family and they didn't care and wanted to see me do back handsprings. And I said, if I was doing that on a stage, then they'd be blown away. If, I, yeah. if they saw someone do a backflip on a stage, they'd be blown away. But they see some guy in the park do five backflips on one leg. They're like, well, it's just some guy in the park. Yeah. And I think it's, it would really change people's perceptions. If there was a big cash prize, they'd see tricking as way more legit. And they'd probably like, think that what people are doing is way harder mm-hmm. because it, it would just give it that legitimacy. Yeah. I, think that's, um, I think that's... It's interesting. Like, I feel like just having that injection of cash into the sport is just going to make... But but the thing is, like everyone's doing a pretty good job all round. It's just it's it's a gradual process. It's not straightforward. You can't yeah, just go from like time. having seven hundred and fifty euros as the prize to fifty grand. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not going to work like that. Yeah. So uh, you said didn't adrenaline try doing that? But I I mean like doing that, but actually like having the prize money, like not just saying you're going to do it and then not doing it. But. Um... <laughs> Uh, was it Henning said but I think it's good see I hear this argument a lot when people say I think it's good that tricking's not popular it makes it special and it's like if tricking not being popular this is just my personal opinion if that's what's making it special to you are you just doing it because you think it's it's cool that you're doing something other people aren't doing because if you are I think that's so, that's just I don't know it's kind of lame it kind of means when people are saying oh, he's just showing off. For you, it's true. Because you're doing it because no one else is doing it. Like, if everyone else did tricking, I'd still be tricking because I love doing tricking. And that's what I want to do. It doesn't matter how many other people do it. And I think if it affects you, how many other people are doing it, you're just kind of being a hipster and you are doing it to be cool, which (laughs) you are showing off, you know? You you know what I mean, though? Because I hear that a lot. And whenever someone says it, I think, oh, well, you're not that into tricking then, are you? 
you're probably going to give up in a couple of years. You're just doing it because you want to be cool. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know. How many people have you seen say That's that? What that I think. How, how many people have you seen say that that are incredible? None, ever. Because the <laughs> ones that are incredible love doing it. They, well, that's like, the they thing, don't like, care if other people but, like it too. But <laughs> I was just laughing because I love it when you go on your puff and come to a rant. When I go, when I go on my rants. <laughs> but, it's but, because, but, it's wait, because but I'm dealing with the repercussions. Let me say something, you fucking I'm pussy. dealing with the repercussions. I'm dealing with people telling me I'm showing off. Because of people like that, people like you. <laughs> me? Showing up. You? No, I'm pointing to the audience. <laughs> um... <laughs> well, I don't know what I was going to say there. You throw me off with your second Sorry. rant. I just, I needed to rant. I haven't, um, you know, every episode I need to have like at least one five minute rant. Nah, I feel you. I just let you do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I did have something to say though, you cuckle. <laughs> oh, God. God, what was it? I don't know. All right. Well, do you, shall I rant some more? I mean, yeah. Shall I do a bit more ranting? Yeah. Well, the, thing, <laughs> the problem with you. <laughs> nah, I'm just. It, it's not. It's not that deep. I, I don't mind that much. But it's like, I don't know. Really think about your position. Think about your position. Like, is the fact that tricking isn't that popular? Is that important? Should that be important to you? Ask well, yourself. Should well, that be important to me that other people aren't doing what I do? Or should I just be enjoying what I do and not letting other people affect me? <laughs> no, just ask yourself that and think about it. <laughs> all right, listen. I'll, I'll be honest with you as well. Okay, first of all, I look like a corpse in this lighting. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> I look like I've passed away. Um, <laughs> uh, you were ranting that long, but fucking... <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, I think, to be honest with you, I think people are... I hope this is the case anyway. I feel like I got a little bit more hope with people and trickers that it's more of like a, I like the fact that I, I, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit more accessible to me. Cause like, think about it. Like the greatest footballers on the planet right now, you're never going to fucking see them. You're never going to be within a few inches of them. You're True. never going to be able to go up to them and just shake their hand and uh, have my... a two hour conversation. Like it's nothing. Who was it? What? Oh. Was it Pete? No, it wasn't Peter Crouch. <laughs> Who, no, uh, my dad was Imagine telling me that. about the footballers that he's bumped into. He's always chatting to footballers. <laughs> he just oh, keeps funny. stopping them and, and bothering them. Who's this? Your dad? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just hassling the whole Premier League. <laughs> yeah, he talks to him like he's like there is mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's nice. It's nice. Um, Yuri said, the problem with money feels like a circle, though. You need, you need money to have a good, good cash prize, but you need spectators to pay for admission to get cash. If you only have one, it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that yeah. is true. So Why I is that a problem, though? The, huh? Why is that a problem, though? Or is he so, saying that's one of have, the difficulties? You can't have the big cash prize if no one wants to go see it, but then yeah, no one yeah, wants yeah. to go see it if you don't have the cash prize. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's where it needs someone to kind of kickstart it, which I guess is like what adrenaline's meant to be doing. Like that's, that would be their thing because they've got the money to put down and then they're trying to, by having that money, legitimize tricking and get people interested, which will make more money. I mean, that's, the, that's their plan. That's the way they explained it to me anyway. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe it needs other people to do that. But maybe, Or maybe they'll do it. I don't know. I don't Why know. Why am I green saying. now, bro? I don't know what's happened. I'm green. I know. You just keep passing away on these rants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, all right, Henning's coming back. I'm sorry, Henning. I was just ranting. Uh, he said, "No, I'm not doing it for others. What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. You can easily talk to the best trickers on earth, but what about all the famous footballers? And it's like, yeah, that, fair that, enough. That I was think my, you can that talk to trickers. You can talk to the best trickers a bit too easily if you ask. <laughs> <laughs> I the amount I give I give advice to people every single day for years on end, and where does it get me? <laughs> like a no, balding man who's ranting at people that are exactly watching his live stream. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather be one of those footballers living in my mansion with a pool, being able to just train. Yeah. Instead, here I am. 
getting people calling me, telling me I look like a match. <laughs> you know? <It's... laughs> you look exactly like a match. Do you know? It's so real. Just in the last couple of days, it's, it's kind of like half of the messages I get are just people like insulting me, taking <laughs> screenshots of my face in tricks, and like how stupid I look. <laughs> I'm fed up with it. it well, you know, just, you know like, how it feels bother. now. You know huh? how it feels. I did a thing. I grew a mustache. I shaved my mustache nearly a year ago. <laughs> Every True. single day, people comment on how I looked. Okay, right. There's two sides of it. There's videos on YouTube where ev I, pretty much every day I get a message saying, that I, I, sorry, I get a comment saying that I look like a cunt. And then the other side of it is people messaging me now saying how much better I looked with a mustache. I'm like, why are you, you, you can't me win. This? You can't win. I, I think with like this guy, he's been consistently throughout the thing, just only making comments to do with me wearing a cap. I just like wearing a cap. I think it's a nice cap. Is that not a nice cap? I think it's dope. And, I think um, it's a, a bloody lovely cap, if you ask me. And I don't know. I don't care that much. Like, to be honest, it's like if just having people comment about it loads, it takes away from the talk a bit because we're not talking about tricks. If we're just going to talk about how Sam, Sam Kojo has doesn't have that much hair, if that's what all we're talking about. But what cheers me up is Kurzaku. I know I could look on your profile and I know you probably, you know, I'd look and I'd be like, ah, do I care what that guy thinks? <laughs> you know, <laughs> because, you know, I could look and I know what I'd see. So, it's like Arthur when he was telling me very bad cheat nine. I looked. Yeah, and he was that's the thing. The people... Because you, like, really good trickers. I've never had a really good tricker go out their way to try and insult me or put me down. It's always the ones who, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Josh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. It comes from within, you know. Like, I've never, I've never commented on a random person I've never met. I've never made comments about some stranger's appearance on the internet. I've never tried to put anyone down, even when I was a young kid. I've never done that. I think you've got to be feeling bad about yourself to want to do that, to be honest. Like, why else would you do it? Oh, you, they could just be nasty. Because people, yeah. are, people are just nasty sometimes. And it's not because, and they love themselves. They love themselves. Oh, more. true. They could I've be. I've met yeah. nasty people that love themselves more than anything. <laughs> yeah. Someone said, "Don't you have the get?" No, I don't have the gainer switch record. Fareed has the gainer switch record. He can do twenty six gainer switches. I've done twenty one. He did twenty six okay. on spring floor. And Ilya wasn't Ilya twenty six as well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Uh, Bailey Payne has cork record, not gain a switch. Bailey Payne did 28 corks. And Josh said, Kojo's for the people. Exactly. Kojo's going to be real with you. If you give Kojo shit, then he's going to be upset and call you names. <coughs> yeah, so, pretty much. Yeah. He's going to be he's he's going like to be nasty to you on a public forum. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm, not, I'm nice to most people. Like the guy who sent me the screenshot of my face looking stupid earlier he asked me for tips afterwards still bloody helped him <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, i just i thought i can take two paths here and i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna help him you know i'm I, gonna help everyone who asks but, i do um, like biting back sometimes though because it's only like, if they yeah, really mean if they're just the joking the day, like if they're joking we've got five seconds left <laughs>